Christ is with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Those who were cut off and far away from God have been called near. Before, Before we follow, we are in need to God, God had already, already answered us. us. God's voice has long been speaking in the darkness, offering redemption. Amid the tumult of voices around us, God has continued to speak in grace. Grace has made all the difference, as it is all of God's own initiative. God has indeed heard our needs, our cries, our insecurities, and fears. Amid them all, God has called us by name into God's own presence. Opening prayer. Lord, the world is full of people trying to find ways to coerce you to redeem, rescue, save, and care for them. All along, you have been calling to us that we might listen to your initiative of grace, love, mercy, and goodness for ourselves and others. Whatever the reason, we have too often allowed opposing voices, concerns, and priorities drown out your voice, drown out us listening ears that we might hear you and listen, grant us the, uh, the awkwardness, grant us the awkwardness to expect you to come to our encounter, grant us to seek you and place ourselves in your service. If you will turn in the green hymnal to number 105, we will glorify. Search me and know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my bed and my lying down, and you are acquainted with all my ways. Even before the word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it all together. You pursue me behind and before and lay your hand on me. Such, Such knowledge is too wonderful, wonderful for me. me. It, it is high. I, I cannot attain it. it. it, it, it Whither shall, shall I go from your spirit? Or whither shall I flee from your presence? If I go to the 
If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, let only darkness cover me, and the light about me be night. Even the darkness is not dark to you, the night is bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I pray you were fearful and wonderful. Wonderful are your works. You know the story of your work. My frame was not hidden from you. No and I was, was made made in the secret, and I was made in the depths of the earth. Of the earth. Of the earth. Of the earth. In your book were written the day and the hour when you were made. Now you are the Son of God. 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 If I would count them, they are more than the same. When I awake, I am still with you. Oh, that you would slay the wicked, O God, and that the bloodthirsty would depart from me. Those who maliciously defy you, who lift themselves up against you for evil. Do I hate them, them that hate you, O Lord? And do I not loathe them that rise up against you? I hate them. I count them Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting.
was gone a week, so now I have a bunch. <laughs> a joy to be back with you and to be better. It's been a while since I've had real deal blue, and I'm glad to be back from that. Um, I, there is ultimately good news from um, the heart catheterization that Amy had um, while I was sick. They did find some blockages and issues that will need help, but they don't need them right away. And she is still on track to uh, be placed on the kidney transplant list. And that's really good news. Uh, I would like to ask you to pray for uh, Betty Osmore and her family. That is Susan Osmore's mother. She has had a couple of falls recently and, and has ended up having to be in rehab. And it's, it's just a stressful time, but that she'll heal well and, and uh, that the family can all manage the, the things that come with, with uh, having someone in rehab. Okay. We give thanks for Susan for being back with us as well. Um, pray for Amy as she continues looking at uh, treatment ahead um, with being on the um, transplant list for kidney and upcoming heart surgeries at some point when that's determined to be necessary. Uh, also praying for Betty Osmore who's had some recent Others. Chris, I uh, prayed for Urban. Had another fall last last oh. night. Urban had a fall last night, um, about ten thirty, and uh, we called to check on, and he did not answer this morning. But through Patricia, uh, Patrick went over and found him on the floor. He's he's doing fine, but he did have a fall last night. Stay on the floor until the battery got there. Um, Ruth was asking for prayer for Billy. Uh, this is a daughter in law's cousin who's 52, 53, more or less. Uh, was diagnosed with um, kidney cancer, I think it is, uh, that is metastasized to the brain. So um, pray for. Him and his family, uh, young children at home. Other joys or concerns to share? Let's turn to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for being present in our lives, for coming to us, for finding us when we did not know you. For seeking us out when we would run away. For encouraging us when we are down. For giving us love when we feel unlovable. Giving us grace when we don't believe we deserve it. Because of who you are and who we know you to be, we lift before you. Tammy and Susan and Amy and Betty, Urban, Billy, and their surrounding friends and family who are caring for and being challenged by care for them. We ask that you would grant us grace and wisdom and courage to know how to reach out offering comfort and strength. Strengthen the bonds of friendship and fellowship that we find in you as we support these and others in our care. We recall those words by which Jesus taught us to pray, for saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever.
word in our lives. For your grace that meets us before our awareness. For your provision for our needs. For giving us a call and a mission and a purpose. To become disciples and make disciples of all the world that this world might be transformed after the principles of your reign of mercy, empathy, grace, love. Transform us, we pray. For it's in your name we come to you. Amen. Please join me in the affirmation of faith number 883 in your blue handle. We are not alone. We, we live in God's world. world. We, we believe in God, God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. I invite you to turn your attention with me to 1 Samuel chapter 3, I'll be reading verses 1 through 10. 1 Samuel chapter 3, 1 through 10. Hear the word of the Lord. Now the boy Samuel is ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of Yahweh was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, is lying down in his room. The lamp of God has not yet gone out. And Samuel is lying down in the temple of Yahweh, where the ark of God is. Then Yahweh calls, Samuel, Samuel. And he says, Behold me. And he runs to Eli and says, Behold me, for you call me. But Eli says, I do not call. Lie down again. So he goes and lies down. Then Yahweh calls again, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel gets up and goes to Eli and says, Behold me, for you call me. But he says, I do not call you, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel does not yet know Yahweh, and the word of Yahweh has not yet been revealed to him. Yahweh calls Samuel again a third time, and he gets up and goes to Eli and says, Behold me, for you call me. Then Eli perceives that Yahweh is calling the boy. Therefore, Eli says to Samuel, Go lie down. And if he calls you, you say, Speak, Yahweh, for your servant listens. So Samuel goes and lies down in his place. Now Yahweh comes and stands there calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel says, speak, for your servant listens. The word of God for the people of God. Names were very important to the Hebrew people. 
they were important for most of the peoples in that area of the world in that time particularly. Names were more than just monikers to distinguish one individual from the next. They also named some quality or trait, a trait of character regarding the person they were naming. Noah is just the term grace in Hebrew. He's called grace because his story should remind us of grace. David. It's not really a name in Hebrew. It's the word general. There is one passage that says that rather than David had killed Goliath, but Elkanah had killed Goliath. And some speculate that Elkanah was actually David's name. But David became the way of referring to him for his status and position in the life of Israel as the great general leading people in battle. Samuel is a fusion of two terms. One is the verb to listen. The other is a term for God. When we are first introduced to Samuel, his name is said to be Yahweh has heard my cry. Yahweh has listened to me, says his mother. So she names him Samuel. In today's passage, it would seem that the term has changed a bit. Not so much that Yahweh listens, but this is one who listens. To God. The books of Samuel are generally considered uh, continued in the books of Kings. One extensive narrative that traces a lineage of a period of time in Israelite history, Samuel being the last of the judges to come. Samuel introducing the monarchy with Saul. The tale picking up with Saul and then with David and then kings picking that up with the tales of Solomon and the other kings to follow him. Written as one continuous whole for, and speaking from the very same theological tradition in the life of Israel. But we find that there is continuity and yet discontinuity in this narrative transition. Samuel stands at the end point of the time of the, prop of the judges, and yet he is also a prophet. Through him, the monarchy begins. But there is discontinuity for whereas the judges have been the ones speaking for Yahweh to the people and being the instruments of Yahweh. The kings will not be so much. It will be the prophets to whom the word of God comes as is described here in today's passage. The word of God was not common in those days, it tells us. And yet the word of God comes and stands before Samuel, speaking to him. The narrative tells us that this word is rare as there were few visions of Yahweh in those days. I don't know if you caught that distinction, but vision is something I see, right? The word of God is not something I see so much as something I hear. And yet the text doesn't find any discrepancy between saying the word of God came to Samuel and he heard it and describing this as a vision. For here Samuel appreciates who God is. 
The Spirit of God comes to him, the breath of God, the voice of God, the word of God, the fire of God. This word is related to the term vision, but here an audible expression, seeming, of God's presence and communication. Samuel is lying down in the tabernacle in front of the Ark of the Covenant. While Eli is asleep where he should be in his own quarters of the tent. It's night, but the lamp of God has not yet gone out. And Eli has become visually, physically impaired in his advanced years. Samuel is sleeping before the ark, similar to one who desired to incubate a vision. That's like what we see in 1 Kings chapter 3, where Solomon comes before the ark of God and makes thousands of sacrifices, the text tells us. And then sleeps in front of the ark as though to coerce God to come and speak to him. Yet Samuel is not expecting God to come. Samuel may be lying there before the Ark of the Covenant, but he does not yet even know the voice of God. And Eli has to tell him after God has called him three times. If he calls you again, here is what you must say. Eli is the one that's supposed to be hearing from Yahweh, right? He's the priest. He's the one that was supposed to be representing God. The intermediary between God and the people of Israel, the one through whom God's word was supposed to come to the people. It was to Eli, though, that Samuel's mother had brought him after he had been weaned to come and to serve Yahweh before Eli and to learn the ways of Yahweh. And now it is God's word that comes to Samuel, bypassing Eli altogether. Eli finally puts two and two together. He instructs Samuel. And then Yahweh's word comes, and it is Yahweh coming to take up Place to take up his residence, to stand before the ark of God's covenant, and to address Samuel directly. This is not presented as any kind of intermediary that comes to Samuel. It's no lesser presentation of Yahweh. It's no lesser form. This is Yahweh directly calling Samuel. There at the Ark of the Covenant, which is conceived of as the mercy seat, as the earthly throne, a replica of the heavenly throne where God would sit. Eli's role is essentially over. He has fulfilled his final real task. As he awakens Samuel to listen to Yahweh when Yahweh's word comes to him. And then in the message that is relayed to Samuel, this understanding that Eli's time is over is further fleshed out. As Eli is told through Samuel that his sons have not been following in the ways of Yahweh and Eli is being called to tell for not calling their hand on their abuses and oppression of the people. And so Eli is being stripped of his place. His sons will be stripped of their position. 
And God will begin to work with the people in a new way through this one who listens to Yahweh. Samuel's life and role will be this bridge transitioning from judges to prophets. He will transition from the amphictony of Israel to the monarchy as the political reality of Israel changes. And yet it is to the prophets and through the prophets like Samuel that God will continue to work. They will be the ones who speak on Yahweh's behalf. In fact, that, that term prophet in Hebrew, Navi, means mouthpiece. They will be God's microphones, God's bullhorns, God's mouthpieces through whom God would communicate to this nation and beyond. They will hold kings and priests both accountable for enacting the will and the purposes of Yahweh. These prophets like Samuel would be the ones who listen to Yahweh. It is to them that Yahweh's word will come and through them will speak. God's word will come in this image of everything that comes from God's mouth. Breath, spirit, voice, word. And that same word will be communicated through the prophets throughout the coming generations. And all of this being contingent upon those who would listen to Yahweh. For Samuel, learning to listen meant learning to expect to hear what Yahweh had to communicate. It did not come at his action or his initiative. Apparently he slept in front of the Ark of the Covenant as a routine. That was just his place. It had the quote nightlight, right? The lamp of God's presence that hadn't gone out yet. Unlike Solomon, he did not arrive before the ark with fanfare and thousands upon thousands of sacrifices. Yahweh simply came to him in grace, reaching him where he was. Yahweh spoke of Yahweh's own will and initiative. What was required of Samuel would be that he listen and heed the word that came to him. There was no ritual, no rite, no sacrifice, no deed performed to cajole God into coming, appearing, speaking. That's pretty much how the word of Yahweh comes to other prophets along the way. As it will be described that the word of God came to Jeremiah or upon Isaiah to Jonah, Joel. The lamp of God has not yet gone out. Seems to be about something more than just marking the time of day for this narrative. The word of Yahweh might have seemed to be rare in those days, but perhaps that was due to the people not stopping to listen, not expecting to hear from Yahweh. The word was no longer coming to Eli, but he was no longer listening. Are we willing to listen and heed God's voice as he speaks to us. Would you join me in our closing hymn number 413 in your blue hymnals? A charge to keep I have.
sharing it with those around us, being implements of your reign. Take us even as we find ourselves uncertain as to what the future might hold or how you might wield us or how you might speak and fit us for your kingdom using us as implements of your reign here on earth. For it is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. 